Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. In the last episode, we defeated Garland, and we rescued the princess, and for our reward, we got a bridge and a loot, which is interesting to say the least. It's not the kind of treasure that you would expect to get from a kingdom, but I'll take it. Uh, then we made our way to Matoya's cave, we picked up some treasure when she wasn't looking, because she's blind, ha 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 ha. And uh, in this episode, we're going to head east to a port town, which we actually know to go to because uh, there's an NPC somewhere in Kunaria that actually mentions that, and it's pretty much the only indication of where to go next. But before doing that, I'm going to grind on some ogres here just because I want to pick up some gold, make sure I have enough to buy the, uh, the new equipment that becomes available in the next town over. And so I'll do that really quickly, and then I'll meet you back at the fork where we decided to go north to Matoya's cave. I don't know why, but in the previous episode, when I was battling the ogre and the creeps, I made it look really, really easy. But after fighting them just now, when I was grinding for gold, I kind of want to stress that if you're around my level or even lower, be really, really cautious when fighting them, just because even though the rewards are high, if they're hitting you for 25 plus damage each hit, even on your fighter, the battle can go pretty sour pretty quickly. And uh, I know I was having a hard time, I was missing a lot of my hits, and they were hitting all theirs. But luckily, I did manage to gain a level in the process, got some much needed hit points, and more importantly, I got a lot of gold. Uh, actually more so than what's on the screen, but I went back to Corneria, I picked up Lightning and Cure for Lexa, and I also picked up Harm for Hope. Now, I didn't buy a third level 1 spell for Hope just yet, mainly because the two that are left over aren't that good, I'll probably never use them. And really, you want to be using all your level 1 charges on Cure at this point, because you don't have a whole lot of options in terms of healing. I'll probably go back later on when I do have more gold and I have time just to pick one and fill out the uh, the spell list because my OCD probably wouldn't enjoy the fact that I left a space blank there. But now that we've done that, we can continue to the east to the next town over. And at this point, the map really does open up so you can get lost. If you head up to the north here, it'll actually take you back to Matoya's cave, but since we've already visited that area, we don't really need to go that way. If you're low level, like level 2 or so, and you're not prepared for this area and you do get lost, you might come across some enemies that are a lot stronger. Uh, mad ponies are one of them, but there's also ogres and creeps later on. And if they catch you off guard and you don't have the necessary healing capabilities, you could easily wipe. Uh, the mad pony is a new enemy. Uh, I think in the remakes of this game, they actually call it the crazy horse. I don't know why they changed it. I guess. It does kind of look like a unicorn, and I don't know if a unicorn is more like a pony or more like a horse, but really that's kind of the question we should be all asking ourselves. Is a unicorn a pony or a horse? Because I really have no idea. Uh, nothing to worry about, at least in this point in the game. Uh, they have a lot of hit points, they don't do a whole lot of damage, but you can come across them on your way to Garland's castle, and if there's one of them, you could easily take them on. But any more than that, I definitely recommend running away, just because if you have 30 hit points and they're hitting for 4 damage each time, they can pretty much wipe your party if they wanted to. But as you can see, we're already at the next town, and this town is actually called Provoka. Welcome to Provoka. This is probably one of my favorite towns in Final Fantasy, just because the name is really fun to say. It's kind of like a mix between Provoke and Paprika. Provoka. Uh, probably just me that feels that way, but uh, if we come over here and we talk to this guy, if he doesn't walk away from us, he'll cry for help, but he won't say why. And his eyeball, weird. His left eye is bigger than his right eye. I don't know if we can see that. See? Oh, that's kind of creepy. I never noticed that before. Anyways, so we come over here, we talk to this guy with a mohawk. He'll tell us that the town has been invaded by pirates, but really, I don't see any of them. Maybe if we head over here. Well, that looks like a pirate, but there's only one of them. If we talk to him... He'll tell us that he's Bicky, or Bikey, I don't know how you want to say that. I'll call him Bicky. And he's a pirate, and he doesn't like us, so he's going to set his pirate crew on us. And this is the first time in the game that we're going to come across nine enemies at once. I uh, don't need to worry too much about them. As you can see, I didn't even bother healing up for this battle. Just because they do a little bit more damage than imps, but they have... I don't know, maybe they have less hit points. They should be a one-hit kill for all your characters, and they're pretty easy to hit, so you don't have to worry too much about them, but uh, the sooner you can take them out, the better, because, I mean, nine hits do add up over time. And yeah, there's not too much to this boss battle. It is a boss battle, if you can tell. I know there isn't, like, 
boss battle music in this version of the game, just because this was before they even thought about it. Uh, it wasn't until later versions of Final Fantasy that they put that nice touch in. But uh, this is, I guess we'll call it a mini boss. How about that? Just because it's not too difficult, but not too easy. Part of the storyline. And um, yeah, take them out as quickly as possible. And the experience points, I think it's decent. But more importantly, as you would expect, pirates have a lot of gold, so it's always a nice bonus. And one more. There we go. Critical hit the win. And 90 experience points, which is actually pretty good, eh? and 360 gold, which is huge. And so for defeating the pirates, if you talk to Bicky again, he'll give us his ship. But uh, I don't know about you, but I don't remember seeing any ship out in the port there. So let's go take a look. Uh, I'm sure it's there, I just I just didn't see it, maybe. But no, I'm, you know, I'm feeling pretty confident that I didn't see anything out there. So maybe there isn't a ship, maybe he's just kind of fooling around with us. In more ways than one, what? Uh, but no, as you can see, there is a ship here. How come we couldn't see it before? I don't know. Nintendo Logic probably states that uh, it has a cloaking device that can only be used once, and now it's broken, and yeah, I'm gonna go with that. So now that we're in Provoca and we've gotten our ship, there's a couple things we can do here in terms of equipment and spells. I'm gonna start off by going to the armor shop on the left here, just because that's the first one that I can see. And if you just come down here, what does this person have to say? The elves live across the sea. Matoya's herb is the only thing that will wake their prince. Interesting. So, I guess now that we have a ship, we can go talk to the elves. But, uh... Matoya's herb. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if that's going to come into play later on. Uh, item shop here. I'm not going to buy anything just yet. I want to save my money for more important things. Mainly some new armor. Uh, we have access to the iron armor, which is something you want to pick up for your fighter, definitely. Uh, they also have wooden shields and gloves, which I am going to buy for paper. But uh, my inventory is full for paper, so I'll give the gloves to Lexa, and then I'll do some switching over. And yeah, so I don't know about you guys, but I like to kind of arrange things so that it kind of makes sense. Put the shield there, put the gloves there. There we go. Oh, there we go. And I want to point out at this point, if you don't push the button when you're selecting on an item, you'll get that really disturbing noise, which I hate. I don't know why they put that in the game. It's so, I don't know, it just kind of, oh, it gives me a headache just thinking about it and hearing it. But uh, now we can sell that chain armor that we don't need anymore, get our money back. And as you know, that's common in all Final Fantasy games, if you sell used equipment, you get half of what you bought it for, which is, you know, better than nothing. Uh, especially early on when you're kind of scratching for money and you don't have a whole lot to go by. Uh, I guess we'll go up to the white magic shop if this guy won't walk in our way. And this guy tells us he's escaped from Melman in the west and that his town is in trouble. But uh, remember that for later, folks. If we come to the white magic shop, they have some new spells. We have lamp, mute, uh, anti-lightning, and invisibility, or invis. These spells aren't that good. I forget what Lamp does, probably nothing important. Mute silences the enemies, so if they have a special ability, you have the chance of making it so they can't use it. Pretty useful for some situations, so I might buy it later on. Uh, Anti-Lightning is probably the best spell here. It reduces damage from lightning-based attacks, which will be pretty useful in a couple boss fights. And Invisibility, or Invis, I forget what it is, uh, it raises the caster's evasion by quite a bit. If you're doing like a solo white mage challenge or four white mages, definitely want to pick up this spell. Incredibly useful. But uh, I'm not going to buy anything just yet. If we come down here, we will find the black magic store, which has a couple more spells which are a bit more interesting. Uh, mainly ice. This is a ice based attack. It's kind of like fire and lightning, but uh, it does a little bit more damage. Uh, dark causes blindness to enemies, which is bugged in this game, so don't buy that. Uh, temper increases the attack of uh, the caster, I think. I don't think you can use it on someone else, but uh, don't hold me to that. I'll probably buy it anyways. Uh, slow, completely useless. Uh, I think it lowers the hit percentage of the enemy so they can't get multiple attacks. But uh, mainly you just want to buy ice, and if you have some extra money, maybe temper. 
If we come over here to the weapon shop, this is where we want to buy the most of the stuff that I want to buy. Uh, we have some new equipment available. We have the short sword, the hand axe, and the scimitar. Uh, the scimitar you want to give to the thief if you have one. Uh, you can choose between the hand axe and the short sword for the fighter. I'm going to get the short sword for the fighter and I'll explain why. Uh, while the hand axe does have a little bit more attack power, it lowers your hit percentage by a couple percent. And interestingly enough, hit percentage in this game kind of determines how many hits you get. Uh, if you take a look at the status screen, as you can see, my hit percentage is 29%. For every 32% that you have, you have the chance of doing an additional hit. So kind of like how the Mad Ponies were hitting two times at once, if you have 32%, you can hit for two attacks at once. So if you're kind of on the cusp, and you put on the Hand Axe, and you don't get that second hit, it's probably detrimental in the long run. So keep that in mind when you're buying some new equipment. Uh, and for the most part, axes are the only thing that lower your hit percentage, whereas swords don't. So yeah, I'm going to sell some of those rapiers that I no longer need. And as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of gold, so I can't really buy the magic spells that I want. But, you know, if I grind enough, I can get the gold to do that. I'll probably do that off-screen. Well, obviously I'll do that off-screen, in between episodes. But, now that we're pretty much done here in Provoca, all that's left for us to do is to hop on our ship and held across the sea to Elfland, which the uh, one NPC told us that their prince was sleeping, so maybe there's something that we need to do there. But until then, my name is Paper Napkin. Take it easy, folks.